Hello guys, welcome to lesson number 53 in our series Drawing Techniques for Beginners. As I stated towards the end of the last lesson, what I've started to do is I've started to bring some value now into the robes of our Statue of Liberty. Um, so what we're going to start doing today is I'm going to start bringing some uh, much darker values into the torch area. We're going to be using our 7B for that. A uh, combination of 2B and 7B, maybe a bit of HB in there. And also in these very dark areas, so around the nose, the eyes, and these sort of portholes as well. Uh, we'll try and also add a little bit more of the maybe 2B uh, in some of the darker areas on the robe itself. Uh, I freshened up our needed eraser. Uh, we're going to be using 2B, 7B, 2H, and I've obviously got my HB as well. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to start off with the with the 7B. Uh, I've sharpened this. Now, when you're using these uh, much darker values, these softer pencils, it's very important that you do keep them quite sharp. They do dull quite easily. Uh, if you're still using the same technique that we've been trying to use throughout, where we're turning the, the pencil after every few strokes, we will keep a relatively sharp point, uh, but it's very important that we do either sharpen or try and maintain a sharp point with the, with the technique I've just outlined. Uh, it's been great seeing some of your versions of the Statue of Liberty over on the group. I'm uh, really looking forward to our next project, which is the dog project. It's another dog, uh, and it's actually the picture of my, my brother's dog. Uh, she's called Myla, and she's a Weimarama. So uh, we should be getting started with that in a few more lessons' time. I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of work left to do with our Statue of Liberty. Um, we're just going to really try and bring out some of these darker values and just get to work on the torch itself. Now, if you look at the reference image, this really is the darkest, the darkest area of our drawing. And it's what's going to give us the greatest contrast. This along with the sort of portholes on the crown of the Statue of Liberty. So we are going to make sure that we pay particular attention to these areas and just make sure that we have got the right saturation of value in there. I was looking back at some of my older drawings the other day. I was uh, clearing a cupboard out where there's a lot in there. and Certainly that the aspect that I think I've improved the most is is the uh, the darker values. I've, I've really, over the last year or so, I've really pushed those on purpose. And possibly, whilst I've been trying to teach you guys how to improve your drawing, it's something that I've subconsciously tried to do myself, which is, like I say, really try and push those dark values. Not being afraid of going too dark, which I know is something that a lot of you suffer from. It's certainly something that I... I suffered from when I was drawing and I, I only need to look back at some of my previous work to see that. But it really is that contrast, so really bringing those dark values up whilst maintaining those highlighted areas that really, um, really does take your drawings to a, another level of realism. So I'm just making sure that I'm coming down in this vertical sort of direction when I'm trying to just darken up those, they look like vertical lines, vertical holes almost underneath the torch area. My daughter said the other day, it reminds her of a mushroom, the underside of a mushroom. I'm guessing she's meaning those big sort of open top mushrooms, but I, I understand what she was getting at. So really just trying to push some of the dark into here. It's 
been really nice to uh, read some of your comments recently over on the Facebook group. We've got a, a very kind group of people on there. Um, so don't forget to keep posting your work up there. If you've got any anything you'd like some advice on, it doesn't necessarily need to be the the lessons only the lessons you know if you've got something that you're struggling with then just pop me the question over there and like I say I will I will try and answer as many of them as I, as I can and if I can make a short video like we did a couple of weeks ago uh, with one of Dolores's questions then I'll absolutely do that because sometimes a quick video is 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 better all round for everybody than a long-winded reply to a question if you haven't joined our group already, go and find us on Facebook. We're called Tutorial Tuesdays Beginners to Pro. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel. You can find me on Instagram as well. That's at ArtisticN1K. It's the same as the YouTube channel. And just mention that you're from the group or from the YouTube channel and I'll follow you back. It's nice to, uh, to see some of your work. I'm just going to darken this this ring around this outer lip because again we've got some great contrast there great okay so using the 7b I'm just going to try and bring out a little bit more definition around this hand and thumb where it's actually holding on to the, the torch area and it's one of those opportunities really to capture the viewer's eye it's those very dark areas those nooks and crannies that we can find all over our portrait work really but are very very important if we can develop the contrast in there. I've got a few areas just underneath these fingertips as well. And like I say, because we've we've gone through the process now of layering, we've got we've got a lot of graphite down all over the drawing really. Um, and what that means is these softer pencils are going down very smoothly. Okay, so let's um, let's start to work a little bit more darkness in some of these creases on the actual robe. Now I've I've started to lay out some of these horizontal lines uh, with the HB and the 2B pencil. I did that in between last lesson and today's video, uh, just to. I was just enjoying myself really and I was just uh, felt as though it was a necessary thing to do. And I'm just jumping around this drawing now. I'm, I'm not quite, but I'm almost at the stage where we're starting to balance a few values. But I'm just really trying to ramp up. Now I've got this 7B in my hand, I'm just starting to ramp up some of the contrast in the areas that I know are the darkest values on the drawing. So this this crease underneath this hairline is certainly one of those points. And we need some, just to give a little bit more definition within this eye socket area. So I'm not just gonna go in there like a coloring book and just go over the whole thing um, <clears throat> with my 7B. I am still looking to try and find the darkest areas within the the dark zones, obeying those laws of light and understanding that things that are further away from the light generally are darker, or well, not even generally, always are darker. The only exception that I've come across, and I noticed something yesterday actually when I was out and about, the only exception to that rule are with clouds. If you have a look at clouds, particularly on those days where you've got, it's not covered in white fluffy clouds, but you've got a, 
relatively bright day. What you can often find with clouds is you can have clouds that are behind one another but they're still lighter so the, the, the lightest clouds are not always necessarily the ones closest to you or in front of them. So have a look at that, it's, it's a really interesting phenomenon uh, and I'm sure the, it's got something to do with the, the height at which the clouds are and the way that the sun's light's impacting on them from such a great height up. Uh, but that's the only thing really that I found in nature that you can have something behind something else that is actually brighter. Everything else, if we look at this portrait or this picture of the Statue of Liberty, the things that are closest to the light source are always the lightest. So your nose, the edges of cheeks, they are always lighter than the areas that are further away. So this area in here that I'm just working on now around this neckline, the light is struggling to get in there from the direction that the light source is coming from. And we know where the light source is coming from because we only need to look at the forearm of our Statue of Liberty. We can see that the light's coming from this direction. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to take my HB pencil now and I'm just going to start working a little bit in our ear in this area here because I've got this very light area here and I'm, I'm not 100% certain that uh, I've got the values in the rest of the face quite right yet. Uh, so I'm just going to start to take away some of this very light area around the ear and just hopefully bring some value into this area which will then give me something to work in contrast with the rest of the face so I'll then know if I need to darken any of these areas up if I need to brighten them up at all take some of the value away now when we talk about contrast we don't just talk about contrast in terms of the light and light and dark values, we can have contrasting textures as well. So wherever we've got some very smooth textures in the skin or the face area of this statue, we have some nice textures in and around the hair here and the ear that are going to be in contrast to the rest of the drawing. And it's very important that we, we capture those. So we've got these very harsh dark lines which definitely indicate grooves or holes and it's those areas that are going to give our drawing a an interesting look to it. So I'm just layering this HB pencil on. I've got a lot of value in and around this area already because we've been brushing so much, we've been drawing you know, for quite a while now. So we've got a lot of excess graphite. So that's one of the reasons why you didn't see me straight away going in with the 2H pencil. I don't really think there's a huge amount of need to do that just yet. Now, if I found that this HB pencil was going on grainy and it was starting to show the tooth of the paper a little bit too much underneath then that's certainly something that I would have possibly looked at going back to doing just having a, a go with the 2H pencil but this seems to be going on quite nicely certainly in these darker zones and again I'm just making sure that I'm obeying the laws of light so are the shadows tending to be in the same areas? Are they pointing the same way? Because it doesn't take an awful lot to throw the viewer's mind off. And if you have a couple of shadows in the wrong place, facing the wrong way or just slightly off, it gives the viewer a hard time interpreting what you want them to interpret. So 
So I am going to come in with the 2H pencil now, uh, just around the edges, or as I'm just sort of fading in towards these lighter areas of the actual ear itself. Um, and I can see I am getting some value out of this 2H pencil. So that's a, that's a good thing. It's always nice to be able to get some value with the 2H pencil. I, I really like the 2H pencil. It's one of my favorite pencils. It's very versatile. Because it is such a hard pencil, the particles of graphite that are coming off of it are extremely small. I posted a video up the other day, just uh, I shared a link, and it was actually of the Faber-Castell uh, factory where the pencils were all being made, uh, which I thought was fascinating, seeing how the pencils were made. and Basically, the, the, the pencil leads are a combination of graphite and clay. The darker pencils have less clay in them and more of a graphite mix. So your HB pencil is a 50-50 blend between graphite and clay. That's your pencil that sits right in the middle of the spectrum. So anything towards the H range, so from the HB down towards your 2H, your H, um, you know, you can get 9Hs and things like that, they are going to have more clay than graphite in them, which makes them harder and less dark. Anything towards the B range in your pencils is going to have more graphite and less clay. And I just thought it was interesting watching watching the um, the video that I shared when they were actually making those mixtures of graphite and clay. So I'm just using the 2B pencil now, just to bring out some of those darker values in some of those crevices and nooks and crannies in this ear. And this is just going to help take on the, the shape of this ear. I want to be capturing as many opportunities as I can to show curvature. So I want to try and show that this ear, each individual part of the ear has a roundedness to it. So what I'm ultimately doing is I'm I'm doing the sphere exercise again. If you haven't caught up with some of the essential pencil skills, go and have a look at the playlist that's called Essential Pencil Skills. You can find that at the top of the uh, the top of the, fa the sorry yeah the Facebook group in the section called Announcements. You can see all of those all of my playlists in there, but you can also see it on the YouTube channel. If you go to the top of the YouTube channel, there is a section which says playlists. And I've sort of started grouping the lessons together. We're, you know, we're on lesson 53 now, 52, 53. And uh, a few of you were requesting just them to be put into their separate projects because although you don't have to go through them in the exact order, uh, there is sort of a method to my madness and it's, taking your basic skills and working through the project. So for example, we, we start by practicing our tapered stroke, moving on to a sphere, moving on to a barrel. And then the first real project that we did was the baby. Now, the reason I chose the baby in that particular picture uh, was because it's really just a one stage on from drawing a sphere. The baby's head is that very spherical object it's quite smooth skin so we're not going too deep into textures and things like that straight away and I didn't want to overwhelm you and then as we move up through the projects we're getting slightly more and more complicated um, 
But like I say, it's not it's not essential that you go through them in any particular order. So that's why I've grouped them together for you to have a go at at your own pace and however you feel fit. Uh, and I understand that there are some projects that people aren't as turned on by and they're not uh, they're not for everybody. I get that. I get that. But it is nice when one of the projects really does get the juices flowing and something you can get your teeth into and I can I can relate to that. I started off drawing lots of celebrities and things like that f a few years ago. Uh, and I, I just, I don't know why um, I'm not really into big celebrity culture or anything like that. It's not my, it's not really my thing, but I think part of me wanted to draw faces and, and things that were instantly recognizable to most people. So if I needed to make any improvements anywhere, even somebody like my wife could say to me, you know, the nose doesn't look right there on Kim Kardashian or whoever it was that I was drawing. Uh, because obviously these faces were so iconic and so recognizable. Uh, and as my skills became better, the faces became more recognizable. Um, I then wanted to start challenging myself and doing other things. So not simply just drawing celebrity faces and things like that, but um, moving on to landscapes and animal portraits and things like that. So I do understand the need to find a subject that really gets us going. It's very important. So again, I'm just using some more 2B now and I'm just darkening up some of these patches. I'm just trying to increase the shaded areas around the edges of these ears because obviously we, we understand that that's where the light is struggling to get to the most. And we've got this curve that goes inwards into the the hole in the ear where the the sound waves are heading towards. And I'm gonna just brush a little bit in here again and, and I can see that I just need to take a little bit of value out now inside the ear. So I'm just taking my kneaded eraser and I'm just gently dabbing, just taking the top surface of graphite away but now I've got some graphite in there and I haven't damaged the tooth of the paper. This is where the fun really starts because I can, I can create form and shapes without using the pencil necessarily, using my kneaded eraser. And I don't need to smear, smudge or make streaky lines that are going to look unrealistic. I'm just drawing exactly what I see and what I see things as now rather than an ear, a hand, a nose, an eye or anything like that. What I see in is values, values and shades. So I'm just softening up now some of those areas with my 2H pencil and that's a process that you have to go through. Don't think that just because you've used your kneaded eraser in one area once, that's it. You, that's what you're going to be left with. You're going to then come in with your 2H pencil or even a 4H pencil is very, very handy for this. And we're just smoothing and blending out some of those areas to make it look less blotchy. And the more you do it, the more the graphite sort of, it, 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 it sort of, becomes more workable and skin-like almost. I, I don't know how to describe it, but the first couple of times that you use the kneaded eraser and you go back over it with one of the harder pencils, you, uh, you have this sort of unfinished look to it. But after you've done it a couple of times, 
you know, two or three times in the same area, we're removing some of the graphite with the kneaded eraser, putting some more back in, removing it again, rebrushing it. You tend to then start getting this very realistic tone and value. And I guess that because we are adding more value each time and then when we're taking it out, we're not completely taking it back to the the bare paper underneath we are continually having the graphite in there it's just building those layers up but it's building them up very slowly so i'm just going to pinpoint some of these curls with my hb pencil now bring out some of those details in the hair Very similar to when we're drawing realistic hair. Obviously this is a statue, so these are just marks in stone, but try and get the flow, the general flow and direction of, of where the hair sits. Almost like we're looking for a pattern in the grain of wood in a tree trunk or something along those lines. I'm not pressing on too hard with this HB pencil. I don't need to go to the limit of the pencil. I don't want to go to the limit of the pencil. I just want an indication just so I don't get lost. Because now I'm going to start adding some value into some of these strands of hair. Now I'm keeping the pencil strokes quite close together because I'm not looking for individual strands of hair. These are general directions of hair. It just gives the impression of hair. It's not a very realistic sculpture and I guess it would be very difficult to have very realistic hair on a sculpture. So just layering some of this HB pencil now just into some of these areas. And you can see now that I'm starting to take away that very bright area which we had to start with that was just confusing things slightly. And I think once we start to fill this area out with some value, it's going to bring the actual face together more. There's always a stage in your drawing where things don't quite look how they should. And I was talking to somebody the other day on the group about this that I think every artist, no matter how good they are, there's a stage in their drawing where they're like, mm, this is not looking right. I'm not, I'm not super and best pleased with this. And I always find it, it's that the stage where we've got lots of different values and we may have gaps in between certain areas of value. And uh, once we get beyond that and we start to attach things to one another, so like I've started now to attach this side of the face to what was already there. That's when it all starts coming together. And I always find that, particularly when you're drawing a portrait, when you add the hair, it kind of brings the drawing together in a, in a way that almost finishes your drawing off. And up until then, you can have the most realistic values and skin textures, but it just somehow doesn't seem to flow together until you put that crop of hair on top or the hat or whatever it may be. So let's get a little bit of a, uh, a brush going on in there. So I'm gonna use the 2H, uh, sorry, the 2B and just going to bring out again some of those curls 
and flowing lines that are representing our hair. Just using my tapered stroke just to get some value in there gently without damaging the tooth of the paper. I know I go on about that a lot. But once you've ingrained that, that value into the tooth of the paper, you cannot press reverse. You cannot rewind. You're stuck, almost stuck completely with it. You can disguise things and you can camouflage areas and bring values up around it but ultimately what you're doing there is you're causing yourself more work more unnecessary work so by keeping the tooth of the paper intact and layering we can find those opportunities for those subtle value changes but we can also completely erase large portions not that that's something that i advocate okay so i think you can kind of get the gist of where we're going with this i'm looking at the time now and we're just over the 30 minute mark so I'm going to continue just bringing out some of the definition in in and around this ear and far right hand side of the of the drawing uh, and what that then should do is it should give us a much better indication as to how much darker we might need to go in some areas do we need to take any value away uh, and then I'm just going to add a little bit more of the darker darker zones in this robe so some of these these lines are just needing to be reinforced really with the 2B and then any of these darker areas that we touched upon earlier with our 7B pencil and then hopefully what we should be able to do next next lesson is get some of this flame done and start thinking about the background and what we're going to do with our background because I, I do think it's going to need some sort of background. I, I like the effect that the reference image has got. It's almost got this beam of light coming down into the center. Uh, so I want to try and recreate that if possible. Uh, but we're not we're not a million miles away from this now, then, gang. So we're you know we've we've made some fantastic progress. So as always, I just wanted to thank you so much for the support that you're giving me and the channel uh, and the Facebook group. It's a nice place to be. Don't forget to give this a a thumbs up. I don't think you realize sometimes how much a, of a difference it makes when you like the videos or you share them or comment on the videos. It just gets the video out there. It just shows that YouTube algorithms that it's a video that people are interested in. So thank you in advance for any likes and shares that you do give me. Uh, obviously, the subscriptions are fantastic as well. But um, I'm going to crack on with this now for perhaps another 35 minutes. And then hopefully by that time, I'm going to be at a stage where we want to move on to the next lesson. But thank you so much again for, uh, for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit subscribe, smack the notifications button. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.